All right. Today we are going to play some Four Color Shadow, aka Traverse Shadow, aka Jun Shadow, whatever you want to call it. Um, this list is from the Modern Trophy Leader, Dido, Dido Gudati 1. Um, it's not really your normal Traverse Jun list. Um, it is a little lower on Traverses. There's only three. There are no, like, Tar Fires in order to help get Delirium going, but there are Faithless Lootings, which could help, theoretically, with Delirium a little bit. Um, it's a bit unorthodox. There's only one Liliana. Um, but it is what the guy has... Give or take with the guys 5 0 with twice in the last I don't know, two, two times that they've been posted. So we're going to give it a try. So let's jump into a league, see how things go. Uh, what is this? Is Predator Modern. Play some four color shadow. And let's jump into it. Yeah, it's much different than. What I was used to playing, like when I when I used to play this deck a lot, I used to be really big on the Delirium enablers. Like I would play a lot of Tar Fires, and if Tar Fire wasn't that great, I would play Architects of Will, just to make sure I had enough ways to turn the Delirium on. Okay. Okay, so I think this is one of those hands. So we can get paired. Nice. So I think this is one of those hands that you have to keep, but you're not super happy about it. Um, the question is, can we bobble ourselves and hold Dismember and not use a discard spell? And if there's a land on top, we actually probably can do that and hope we get lucky with this Dismember, and there isn't. So we're just going to fetch that away. And we'll lead off with this thought sees. All right, so we're playing against Amulet. So we have this covered. This is kind of going to help them get going. Uh, this pack negation summoners pack don't really matter. I think I'm going to take the trinket mage and then dismember this because this trinket mage turns into an engineer explosives, which is going to body us pretty well. So let's do that. We will then yield through the turn. And hopefully we hit a land. Got my T. I'm getting serious. Yeah, they play one. Yeah, they have one E in their main deck. A land would be sick, because we could go Dismember Death Shadow, and then we can go like Discard Spell. Nice. That was like a good one too. It's not like the perfect land, but Tribe Scout. Our opponent is gonna get beat out the gym this game. This then we're good. Yeah, the more you the more you know. It's even reasonable they play the second. Okay, so now we go. Now unfortunately we'd like to draw one more land, so there's the amulet. But they're gonna play a Teleria West. So the amulet is pretty slow. I don't have a Boros Garrison. So they have gemstone mine in their hands. We know five out of their six cards. Wow, that was a nut draw there. So let's get a discard spell. So let's check this out here. So <clears throat> we're going to crack them. Our opponent's going to have three mana next turn. One, two, three. We're going to crack them for 
seven and then 21. So Summoner's Pact goes and gets the Mazuza, and if they don't draw a green land, they're dead. Ancient Stirrings doesn't do anything. I think my opponent just, I, I think my opponent has no outs. But I think the way that gets them out of this is this Ancient Stirrings, finding like an engineered explosives, but somehow they have to make another mana. I'm fairly certain my opponent has no outs here. They could like naturally draw a, whatever it is, a, uh, so they can naturally draw a Trinket Mage or a creature. So they have outs. So if they draw a creature, we're just going to get rid of this amulet because it enables like their busted draws. Let's get this Watery Grave. I probably shouldn't have even showed them that. Maybe they would have bought that we were four color. Or like not, there's not blue in the deck. <clears throat> How's it going, Tim? Oh yeah, they just scoop it up because they have no outs. I didn't think they did, but. Okay, so against this deck, we want surgicals. We want trophies. Stroke. Fulminator Mage is a maybe, though it is slow. We get rid of this because they have Baylots. We're on the draw, it's kind of slow. Uh, the Fatal Pushes are likely not great, but we want an answer to one of their six turn one creatures. We can cut a traverse because they're likely gonna try. They could like lock us under a bajoka bog. He draws explosives. The problem is, didn't he only have? Yeah, if he had explosives, so maybe they don't. This guy didn't play explosive as a main deck. Um, I'm trying to think of cards that are gonna cut. Like the Tarmogoyf is likely gonna be a little slow here. Especially if they play Bajoku Bog. We're on the draw. We probably can cut these Faithless Lootings because our deck's going to be more uh, focused. So we can go these. And I'd like to make room for one more of these. I think I would probably delete my Twitter. If not for you and Dalloway. Brandon, Brandon is an entertaining fellow. To say the least. We probably can honestly cut a land because look, we only have one and two drops here. We don't need 18 lands. So let's cut this and bring this disdainful stroke in. We'll go like this. I hope everyone's having a good night. Appreciate y'all hanging out. I appreciate Zelgen, Zelgen for the follow. Ooh, that is some hot stuff. Opponents tanking where they want to play. Uh, well, you have to be able to push a tribe scout or they play a second one drop creature. I actually think that all of our shatters are too slow. I think that if you're if you're going to K command on turn three, I think the amulet has likely done its job. And it's just too slow. Like, we're just kind of naked to amulet here on the draw. Like if I had a braid or ancient grudge, I'd probably play that. But I do not. I'm a big fan. One of my favorite parts about this Jun deck was playing Ancient Grudge in my sideboard. All right, so we can play the Bobble Shadow trick. We have a stroke for a Titan. I think this hand's pretty borderline, but I think I'm going to keep it. We it just we have a Death Shadow, which is just like a really important aspect to us succeeding. And we have eight discard spells. So So having eight discard spells makes me a little more apt to keep these kind of hands. 
All right, no turn one play is good. All right, that's also a good one. So we can play two death shadows on two, which is nice. Mistress Bobble. I don't think we want Mistress Bobble. This hand is perfect plus basic swamp for sure. I kind of want to fetch shock. I want to get like a watery grave and cycle this because we have like 12. We have 12 good hits. And if we, and I don't really want to draw another land. All right, that's not a bad hit. So, oh my God, if we get to point this, we get to point this dismember at something. We're going to play two massive death shadows. I saw your 5-0-10-0, Ben. Oh God, if this is, I would love to just snap this off of the stubborn denial. Okay. All right, they get bounce land. We play. We play an explore. Ancient stirrings. Okay, you got it. You got it, friendo. Grove of the burn willows. Yeah, I'm talking about cards that I cannot beat. I'm glad we saw that. We can just play two of these and get absolutely browned. Yeah, back back by was sick. Gonna be back on that trophy board soon. Yeah, dude, you gotta keep up with uh with our boy we're playing tonight. So I think we're just gonna pass. Uh bolt ourselves and then play two death shadows with blue mana up. We can't really do anything. It's a little unfortunate we didn't draw a spell. Have you seen this guy's build, Ben? Nice. First time we get priority, we're going to smoke this. All right, so right now. Bang. So they can tighten me next turn. So unless I draw like a team or battle rage, I might only play one shadow. Okay. I really dislike Traverse Shadow. Yeah, that's legit. I mean, it's different for sure. What do you not like about it? Just, you know, picking your brain here. Walkie boy. Um, I think we're going to hold this lightning bolt where we are going to fetch a blood crypt. All right. So how big does this ballista get? And can I kill my opponent next turn? So if I play two shadows... Leave up a fetch land. My opponent's hand is walking ballista X, which means they either need a land, like they're draw, they need to have a draw step primeval titan or a land primeval titan. The card leads to much of looting helps, but I think this is kind of tough on the mana. I think you definitely need to be like all in on it, you know? My opponent can play a ballista for two. We bolt it. We're at six. We need to find like one more way to deal damage to ourselves. We can just potentially 20 our opponent next turn. This plant might be a problem. I think we're just going to go land. Play. Well, hang on. I actually have to, I actually have to sh fetch shock here. Which makes this awkward. Because if I don't fetch shock, my opponent can ping my death shadow and then make me gain a life with Grove and it kills one of them. Which I, I kinda I kind of uh project what I'm doing here a little bit, which isn't great, but I just realized it like mid sequencing here. 
So yeah, this isn't super proper. I was actually a big fan of Traverse. Like Traverse the Open Wall as a card. I think you have to go all in on it. Like I think I think you have to play like two to three tar fires. If tar fire isn't great, play an architects of will. Like I think that you have to make sure that you can get delirium. But once you get delirium, I like how threat dense the deck is. And that was the draw to it to start, right? Is that you just you just go like you have eight discard spells. You just play like two, play a Tunnel Earth and a Death Shadow, and just hope that's good enough. You don't really play a longer game. What do we got? Bounce Land. So this looks like we're going to get a Ballista or a Titan. Are we going to pick up their Bounce Land? No. Okay, so this can be a Titan. This is a Titan. We might be in a little bit of trouble. Transmute to Laria West. Go get Engineered Explosives and Brown Me. You don't say. Okay. Said. All right, you got it. Gets rid of their amulet, which is not nothing, but we're certainly in kind of a tough time. Oh, nice. We're on time. All right, let's just traverse for a shadow. Play land. Play death shadow. Now, with, with what we've got going on here, we should have everything pretty covered. We can counter Primeval Titan. We can choose to counter this uh, Ballista for three, but we'll probably just bolt it. Trinket Mage. Okay. So what does this go again? We already know they have the they have the Ballista. So what does this get, like a land? No, another engineer explosive, okay. All right, well, we got that one covered. Okay, so the last card is Walking Ballista. And they've got two, four, seven mana. So I think I'm just gonna bolt this Trinket Mage and hold up Disdainful Stroke and look to Disdainful Stroke the Walking Ballista. Because they, they, if they have one more land, then I can no longer bolt the Ballista. And I've got to start to like clear the way. That's a nice draw. And this is the difference in the decks. Like you, you just have many more copies of exactly your threats. So you're better at presenting threats than the other one is. You don't play a longer game as well, and you don't play like a removal game as well, but you are a little more repetitive with your threats. So we're just going to like stroke this. Well, now the things are going to get a little harder. Do we know they still have Ballista? All right, so if I just bolt this, crack them for 12, then they have to block one of them next turn, which means they have to get rid of there. Because we, the last thing that we want is that for this blister to become a 4-4 and then not be able to kill it. And if we, <coughs> if we attack for 12 here, we go to 8. We put them to 8. Then they gain lives for us. These are 5-5s. Five they still have to chump one of them. Even if they draw a land, they still have to chump block. So we're just going to crack, look to untap, 
and put them in the abyss. Let's pray this isn't a primeval titan. What a coinky dink. So now they pick up Colony Garden, which still leaves them dead. Like they need to they need to peel. Now they're dead. Now they're dead like through a peel. Opponent technically should have given me a life here, but I don't necessarily think it's going to matter. <laughs> it's a popular deck at the moment. It's just slow. Like it's not what modern's about, right? Unfortunately, it's a cool card. Yeah, we're so we're playing your nice your list tonight. They're nameless. Ooh. All right, we're on the draw. We have 18 lands. I kind of feel dangerous. This might not be good, but I feel, I want to feel alive here. All right, let's go get overgrown. Yeah, we're gonna want, we're gonna need blue. We're going to need red. This doesn't get stomping ground, though, so I fetched the wrong land already. All right, we'll rely on drawing the land here. Um, all right, I'm good at this game. All right, Urz is mine. Urz is mine. O stone. So we actually might be able to beat a world, beat a worm coil engine with this battle rage. How's it going, unseen? I kind of want to take the Sylvan scrying. I guess I can just stub this because, like, they go get a forest. I think I'm just gonna take this world, this worm coil engine. Like if things go wrong. The worm coil engine is going to be the hardest thing to beat. The second night in a row playing Tarmogoyce feels kind of feels kind of 2017, 2016 esque. <clears throat> What do you got, opponent? They're probably gonna play. They probably drew a land, or they're doing, or they're just like away from their computer, because it makes sense for them to. They probably still play their Urza's Mine unless they drew like the other Tron piece. Now they drew the other Tron piece one total. Okay. All right. Let's just go get. Watery Grave, play Death Shadow. We stub their next play. After that, we go Tarmogoy Thought Seize. And then Battle Rage to clean up what we need to. Okay, so they have Tower. So we know their entire hand at this point. And I think we stub this. Like. Because if we stub this, then we thought see something, and this just prevents them from getting Tron.
Okay. And we have the second fetch land, which is nice. Unfortunately, I actually cannot get red because we can't go shock shock. Hers is mine. Yeah, so I think we just take the Oblivion Stone because that beats us. Is it actually right for me to go fetch forest, crack them for eight, play Tarmogoyf so that we can go fetch shock if they world breaker us? I think it is. So let's fetch a forest because we don't want to go to three and then not be able to fetch shock next turn if they like world breaker my red source. Scoops it up. Nameless, how are we sideboarding here? It's your list. I'm gonna go with what I'm gonna go with what my heart tells me, and then you can tell me what to actually do here. Maybe. These definitely come in. I assume we cut. Could have also dropped a three in Battle Rage for the one shot. Did, did, were they literally at 20 and I just like missed that? I went to happy hour today, so might be a might be a step behind. If I could have actually 20 them, then I'm an idiot. Alright, if I could have 20 them, then, then I lose then I then I'm just an absolute idiot. I kind of want to try this. Yeah, I could have, right? Unless they were at 21, because I go to 3. Fetch Shock Battle Rage. Man. I'm so good at this game. I think this is what I'm going to do. This has got to be nonsense. Just saying. I used to cut a land all the time with this deck back in the day. Heater. Something, something. Cut a land. Mulligan. All right. Show me a land. It's not a land. Okay. Not bad. Okay, I'm going to stop anything here. Huh. I think I'm down for this. We're down for the old draw step, hit that tower. Go get me a new tower. I see how it is. Yeah, I think I'm definitely just gonna like smack this. I guess I can't surge click because my opponent will just use their relic. So I should hold off on that. Yes, in the draw step.
<clears throat> Targeting me. Okay. You got it. Tilt. All right, now there's no point surgically. Because they played another one. And like the thing that I couldn't surgical there because if I go to, as soon as I have priority, if I go to target the Urza's tower, they just relic and they uh, either sack it or they can just relic their own Urza's tower. So there's nothing that I really can do with my surgical there. Yeah. And now we're just dead. We're good. I yield. I yield opponent. <clears throat> All right, we're going to keep it how it is. It was awkward. It's on the mall. They might not be good. They might not be. They might just be for like combo decks. But I want to see if we can play the uh, hit your land surgical game. Or if we're just looking to go like Thoughtsy surgical. And then you have like surgical out like all the Karns or something like that. Excuse me. I used to cut the land all the time back in the day. But this is more for science. Like I want to see if I can if I can play the blow up a land game. Nut. So we're going to bobble them because I think we're going to fetch shock anyways. Because we get a pretty explosive start here. And I think... I think I'm going to get Watery Grave. Like I think we might just abandon what else we're doing here and just be like, whatever, the top of our deck is just nice. I need to get a Black Source. So I can get like an overgrown tomb to traverse, but our land's already gone. So yeah, I'm just gonna get watery grave and just be like whatever. Sketch out the mana base. All right, sphere, sphere, star, stirrings. We're gonna take this Sylvan scrying because they are drawing the Tron piece. All right. We need a big old one time here fetch land. Street Wraith. I would take a Street Wraith. I would take a Thought Seize. Tilt. Come on. All right, they're going to stir the pot. Turn that down. Which one is this? It's the power plant. So they have Tron. They're Troned up. Okay, so there's power plant. All right, nice. Power plant, they played another star. So one, two, three, four. I think we're just gonna hold up a disdainful stroke. We're gonna get
Our green cards don't even do anything at this point. I almost don't even want to get green. I just want to get a blood crypt. But what do we have for red cards? Team or Battle Rage? Yeah, so the green's just better. Overgrown Tomb. We're just going to play one. We know four out of the five of their cards. We're going to feel so dumb. Like, we just jam all three. We get two draw steps. This kind of hand, we're not really beating a worm coil engine. So I think we're just going to, like, counter something here. Grove Concede. Triple Shadow, let's go. We're hoping for a fetch land off the top here. There's the tower. All right, so we know three out of the four cards they have. So we're just going to counter this. They're just going to take it. They might take a shadow, but... Do you have an Oblivion Stone? No, you have a Sphere. Okay. So now we just draw a fetch land, we play all three, and we pray for no Eugene. Our opponent has Forest Forest. All right, I guess we can look for something scary. All right. I was hoping that we would hit an O stone there. Oh, shoot, 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 attack. Get in for my point. <clears throat> Here comes the. Oh, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? The turn after I thought sees. No, I can't. I can't win now. Like beating beating a resolve one of these is so hard unless we can swing through it with a battle rage. What a tilt. You called me about a Rafi. Alright, so we know our opponent's hand. That's nice. So what are we doing with it though? What are they going to do? They're going to attack me for six. They're going to go to 25. I will bolt them. I don't know how explosive our hand was. I don't know. Because like if we hit another fetch land in two draws... Then, or like a Thought Seize, or a Street Wraith, and then any other of those, like we're in such good shape. I can't really get a Tarmogoyf, because that's just too slow. I think I'm just going to like fetch for a fetch land. We're going to hope that our opponent attacks us. We're going to bolt them and rip Team or Battle Rage and kill them. Or bolt ourselves, I don't know. I'm not really thinking at this point, because we're dead. Street Wraith's another option. The problem is, what are we Street Wraithing into? Like, the only way we win is with Team or Battle Rage, and we have to draw, like, Team or Battle Rage and... Well, we need Team or Battle... Like, I think we're going to need Team or Battle Rage to get over the top of this thing. But we need Rage plus Red Source, right? If we had another Death Shadow, that'd be sweet, but we got three for one. All right, we're, this is going to be six. They're going to be at 25. We can't even kill them because we can't Lightning Bolt them. 
We're just like dead. Because we can't get low enough to, to kill them, so we're just going to get a Street Wraith, cycle it, and probably concede. Yeah, so we were dead there because if they attack us twice, they're going to go to 25 life, and our shadow is only going to be a 6. So even if we get a red source, we draw a team or battle rage. We have to then chump in battle rage. What a sack. What a luck sack. That's depressing. <sighs> Let me go back here. See you replay. Let me go here. No oh, pause. No, no, stop. Shoot. Details. Let's pull this thing up here. Okay. All right, now let's take a picture here. Are we still in the queue here? Like, are we still waiting to get a match? Or did I did I click out of that? I clicked out of that. I am. I messed up. I'm going to hold this for for later knowledge. It's got someone's comment on my YouTube channel. I have to figure out how to get rid of that. I'm starting to get a little more traffic there, and it keeps popping up while I'm streaming. Right, let me pull this deck up here. I think with a hand like that, I think you're I think you're supposed to fetch no matter what. Because on the play against Tron, you get two Death Shadows down with backup. The question is what land are you getting, I guess? Cause like what are you keeping on top here? You're keeping another fetch land on top? That's like gotta be the only thing to keep you on top, right? Like you keep a street wraith on top, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I think I'm gonna mulligan. This hand doesn't do anything. This is a black land, maybe, or if we have a traverse in it. All right. The fatal push tarmac life going on. Hopefully we need to point this fatal push at something. Alright, I think if one's good, second one's great. That's something that's nice that you can do with uh, Jun Shadow. As opposed to Greg Sisters, you can just like keep as many Tarmogoyfs as you want. Bob. Bob is dead. Let's go get a watery grave. Push Bob. We're gonna play a tarmac wave, get a Liliana, and then like be really sad. We do another land, which is something we didn't have to do. We have two faithless things in our deck, so we might just leave that there. Uh, 
Oh man, our Charmer Wife isn't ferocious. We kind of have to play this because we need red. Or we might need red eventually. And this land doesn't produce red mana for us. It is a little sad this stuff isn't turned on. We're in trouble now, Chief. What a tail. What a tail. So now Traverse is a live draw. We don't need Lightning Bolt. So we're just going to go get Overgrown Tomb and pass. I guess we can get Breeding Pool. Breeding Pool gives us two sources of blue mana, two sources of green mana. We have two sources of... So the only thing they can cut me off is red with a Field of Ruin. And red likely isn't going to be that great this game. Another bobble. Okay. I really don't want to give my opponent two cards. So I think I'm just going to let him take this. They take Dismember, but it leaves me Stubborn Denial and a redraw. I don't really want to be left with just a redraw. Because now if I draw Traverse, I can go get Tarmogoyf and protect it. If I just dismember the trigger on the stack, they still just take Stubborn Denial, and then I lose two cards. This way I can eventually get back another card there. Right, let's see how this goes. Tilt. I'm doing this just so we get another redraw. Doing their upkeep so they can't see what we draw. Opponents drawing the swamps. They're breaking out of their land screw, which is not good for the home team. Good. Where you go, Nilla? Get that out of my face. Yield through this turn. We're gonna draw two cards. And then we can Faithless Looting with some, with like some selection. All right, so we're going to do that. All right, so we drew a Death Shadow. So we're going to go like this. Thought sees my opponent. Take Liliana. Pass through the turn. That cam ball is going to be annoying. Yeah. This punishes me for playing spells and I play a, spell, play a lot of spells. Ooh. We don't say. If we draw a fetch land here, our opponent actually has to block. Soren, Lord of Innistra, making a 1 1 lifelinker. So this is the one that pumps. You get an emblem, and then you get the plus 1 plus 0. That's not bad. So if my opponent emblems, we die. So I think I'm actually going to attack my opponent. If they emblem me, I block, and then I go to 1, and I can't. They attack with this. I eat it, go to one, and we're still in kind of okay shape. I could just attack Soren, though. So I'm gonna attack Soren with just one though. Hold the rest of them back. Okay. I guess if I, if I attack Soren with everything, I'd be locked out of the game, though. Shame that's annoying. Good Bob, okay. We're in trouble. So I can just run it back, shoot this.
I attack my opponent, they just don't block, and then I hit this and I die, so I have to attack Soren with one of them. And then they attack out. I'm just dead anyways if they fire up shambling vents. I think this is the best out here that I've got at least. I'm going to block here and take six if my opponent goes for it. Especially considering they drew another vent. I think they should 100% do this. <coughs> Beats. Okay. Don't want this, don't want this. Um, we want Liliana Last Hope. We probably want our removal. Battle Rage doesn't seem great. Dismember doesn't seem great. And Faith Decision doesn't seem great. Because you're just going down cards here. I could keep in Dismember, but like they likely fly, and like we don't want to go too low on life totals, especially if you don't have a reliable threat. They have Bob too, so I'm going to cut one stub and then bring in all the pushes. And just try to play the grindiest game I can. We were still dead. Like, they just let Soren die. Right? And we telegraph that. If anything, I would attack them with both. Right, Rafi? Alright, we'll keep this. Put on top. We have a nice curve here. Yeah, Bob would be nice. Tilt. At least we're going to have Delirium. Almost. I guess I'm just going to take their Thoughtseize. I could take their damnation, and then it's they 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 take my last hope, they take my traverse. I kind of like that because my traverse isn't really doing anything because this is gonna be one, two, three. Yeah, we'll just like completely exhaust each other of resources, and it'll be just Tarmogoy versus Lingering Souls. And now my opponent knows my last card, so they can like push Inquisition, then I'm just super dead. Alright, so there's Inquisition, they take Traverse, Marsh Flats. Nice. Then we get Watery Grave. And just serve. So this Inquisition is gone. They've got Marsh Flats, Lingering Souls, and then whatever they draw. The best way to beat these mirrors is to like play the five color version with Lingering Souls. But I don't think this is like a deck that you're gonna see that often. Yeah, you gotta do. All right. Well, we're gonna put it on the table. Um, let's get, so K Command's not that good of a draw, so let's just get Breeding Pool. I was discussing, like, insulating myself there from, a, like, being able to, I would rather be able to make sure I can stub something versus Colagon's Command something if they have a land destruction spell. So this is gone. Okay. So 
You know nothing more about our opponent's hand. We're just dead like a Liliana. Okay. Thank God. And then we're just turning them sideways, like. I think that's a loose attack. Get in there. And I can either edict. I kind of like plussing. I don't know why my opponent's going for something here. Now I want to chew through these because this tells me that they have another Lingering Souls. And I don't want to just get four forward. Because, like, next turn, <laughs> they three me, play in flashback, they have seven. Block two, we go to eight, so we have to rip a removal spell. So we're just going to go down. Because I think I think them not blocking indicates they have a lingering souls. Because it's a little wild for them not to not to block there, in my opinion. I think it's wild, anyways. But <clears throat> I boarded my brutality. It's like, I don't really care if they attack my Liliana. It's not coming at me. Really curious non-block there. These are dead to what? We got four draws off the top of our head deck to kill them? At least by my count. Lingering Soul is just such a beating. There's not really much we can do either. This is so odd. Like I, I do not understand my opponent's play pattern here. It's like they're playing like they have another Lingering Souls, but they didn't just jam. Do your own, Liliana. Fulminator Mage. Okay. That cuts off more draws from us. I believe my opponent should pop that right now. They should get rid of this blood crit before I rip a lightning bolt like a professional. Didn't do it. All right, let's swing in here. If my opponent wants to trade for this Tarmor Wife, then they can trade for the Tarmor Wife. We'll kill two spirits. I guess they, I'm stupid. They can't trade for the Tarmor Wife. They not have something. I'm very confused about what's going on here. And we're just going to get Damnation. Sign me up for that. All does not make sense to me. We go to one. What is this? Bob. Okay. Bob into Soren. If my opponent pluses and passes, I'm just I don't think I'm gonna attack. I still might not attack. So if we attack with everything, they just ch triple chump, and then they make another vampire, lose their Soren, triple chump. Their deck's mostly spells. Their deck's probably like, what, 25 lands? Maybe 22 lands? Probably 22, 23. They've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So they have 
23, they have 14. So their Bob likely kills them next turn. How does this go wrong for me? I don't really see how going wrong, a, like, yeah, I think it's just right for me to not, to let them die to this Bob. If they don't die to this Bob, things can get pretty bad. But the odds are this Bob's going to kill them. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. I wonder if I'm supposed to bring in Surgical for Lingering Souls. Because, like, this is pretty garbage on the draw. We can't really beat it very many other ways. Because I don't think my opponent's deck can beat me without Lingering Souls. I know you're not supposed to sideboard in fair cards against Lingering Souls. Do you think so, Brandon? So, I did the math, and I looked at their hand, and I figured out that, like, I, I thought about their deck. I figured their deck had 22 or 23 lands. They had 9 out. So they had something like 14-ish left in their deck out of 40 cards. Okay. If I don't swing out and they draw a land, then they're still only drawing one spell. They plus their Soren, crack me to one. They go to eight. My Tarmogoyfs are still lethal, so they need to draw something that impacts the board also. Yeah, I was trying to think of what they could draw. Like, I, I thought that if they drew Lingering Souls and I missed. And if they draw, but if they draw that, I'm dead either. Or I'm just dead, right? I'm not dead to souls. I don't know. I'm not going to board in my surgicals. I'm going to board one more of these and I'm going to draw. I kind of like Stubborn Denial against the Lingering Souls deck. Like, we just have to trade and try to kill them. So let's just try this. They've got... If we attack with everything, they jump out. They've got a 2-2. Two -two. They draw Lingering Souls. They have 5. They plus it. Then we're in trouble. I think that if they play Lingering Souls... <laughs> Even if we attack out and they chump. So, Brandon, if you gave your opponent a higher percentage of outs, making you dead by any land on top of their deck, than demanding a second souls per second wrath. But, but, like, they've only got, what, 9 out of 43 cards in their deck that, like, calculator. I'm assuming they have 24 lands, 23 lands, something like that. Uh, this hand's good. We're going to keep any seven in this matchup. Oh, shoot. 14 divided by 43. So they, like, seven out of ten times, here's what's worse. Seven out of ten times, they die on their upkeep. If I make that attack... Do 7 out of 10 times I make that attack? Do Does letting the Bob give them a chance to draw something that kills me? And I think that's that's the hard that's the hard question. We didn't really see very much. We just saw like we saw Bobs and Tide Hall's colors in game one. Uh, we're just going Fetch Shock, getting Overgrown Tomb, and Inquisitioning our opponent. Because like if my if if we if my opponent blocks out, rips Lingering Souls, and then goes plus Soren, I'm in trouble. Death Cloud. You don't say. So our turn next, it doesn't really matter what we take here. I think I'm just going to take the Fulminar Mage. In case we get the option to go like cycle death shadow, push Bob. 
because this is going to take at least another turn. 43. They had 43 cards in their deck. And they had nine lands either in play or in the graveyard. Okay. Is it better to Brutality then? Let me look at their top card. Actually, let me look at my top card. Because I could trade one of these in for a Brutality. No, this is stupid. Look at my opponent's top card. They have another Bob, then we can just like Brutality this. They're drawing a Shambling Vent. I'm just going to do Push Inquisition because it turns on Delirium. I could like Brutality discard, discard the Push, I guess. Which is kind of in a roundabout way the same thing. Oh wow, they're drawing a land too. Okay, nice. So now we traverse and play two Death Shadows. <coughs> Ooh. Somebody fan me. All right, we're going to get... At this point, I think it's better to have... We can't get a second. Do I want a second blue source? No. Do I want black source? I think it's just Blood Crypt. Because if they field my red source. Yeah, we're just gonna get a Blood Crypt. Traverse. Play two shadows. Brutality gain and drain them. Just kidding. We could get a Tarmor Blade, but I think just putting. Like, if they bless Alliance me next turn, I swear to God. I know their hand. I don't know the top card. Push, okay. I mean, they were dead unless they drew Second Souls or Wrath, almost certainly. So, 7 out of 10 times they died to Dark Confidant. 630 is what, 13%. That's assuming they had 2 or more Wraths, 3 or more Souls, and 3 Wraths is a lot. But also, so, yes, but then you add in cards that make it so I have to hit. Like, they could hit Path, Push, <coughs> Or Fulminator Mage. Or they can hit Path or Push also to make it so, and then go down with their Soren to make it so that it's two creatures v two creatures, and I I get to rip. Just another another way another way to think about it. Like there there's a bunch of ways that just kill them. Uh, this is loose. I guess it's not super loose because we wouldn't mind hitting that. I think we're just gonna crack for two. I'm not sure that it's like not just the right play anyways. Okay. I think I'm bolting myself. EOT. And then just like draining this token, killing Soren, playing another shadow. All right, we're all in. It's not bad. So what is that? Is there a card? Then plus next turn, they hit Wrath, Souls, Rip, Push, Push isn't good enough anymore because... Then we just go into, like, where next turn they can rip, like... It's like I'm not saying that you're wrong, Brandon. I'm saying that it is like <clears throat> we have a 70% chance they die right there. They've got whatever you did the math there. They've got a six outer that keeps them that puts them probably ahead if we attack or close to ahead, close to parity. And then they have more on top of that. We're just gonna get wrathed. Okay, full air mage. Not bad. I kind of just want to trophy this and crack for 10. And then next turn, they go to animate. Yeah, I think I'm just going to get rid of this thing.
Like just put the pressure on. Like I think if someone could tell me confidently either way, I'd be all right with it. Okay. I should have tapped this in order to incentivize them to hit a different land. I'm 30% out left. I doubt they survived. It's lower. I just can't do the exact math quick enough. It's going to be wrong. Yeah, I mean, I would give anyone that told me that they could do that exact math at the table and tell me that confidently without a calculator is Rain Man. All right, nice. It's very much like risk reward versus like likely snowballing out of control or having the game snowball your way, if that makes sense. Like I went the higher risk, higher reward play, and you went towards a play that will snowball you advantage while potentially keeping the door open. I don't care neatly enough to do it. Hey, Teddy. Brandon, would you just grab your opponent's deck and be like, hey, can I count this at the table? Or you probably would have just grabbed that graveyard and then counted it up there. You're like, excuse me, sir. There's some mathematics to do. All right, keep. Look at that, dude. We're playing Grixis. This is the annoying part of this deck because, like, in order for me to be fully set up, I need to go Watery Grave Stomping Grounds, and I just don't want to do that. I am going to get a Watery Grave. I'm probably going to go Watery Grave Overgrown Tomb, because I need to hit a third land anyways. Hey! I appreciate everybody from Top Deck Productions coming over. I hope you all are having a great night, and I hope their stream went well. Probably just the revealed card zone. Arbor Elf. Pia Pia. Wow. I think I gotta take this Arbor Elf. Slow him down a little bit. Yep, that's what we're gonna do. You should have just counted the revealed cards and counted their hands. Heater. Alright, let's not psych do this first because we don't know exactly what we want to fetch. This might help us out. We're likely fetching green. Um green black and just hoping to hit another land. Yeah, their hand was zero cards, right? So now we're going to do this before there. Because we can hit like a dismember and have that be relevant. Because it's not like they're going to thought seize us here. But we elf. Alright, that's not bad. Okay, so my opponent drew a land. So yield through this turn. Man, this looting stretches. But, I mean, I, I shouldn't say it stretches because it would be the same thing. Okay, so we're just going to take the tireless tracker because we can stub the blood moon. Yeah, saying it stretches is stupid because I would just be playing tar fire instead of the faithless looting. <clears throat> that sucks, Teddy. Sorry to hear that. I would like to make this shadow larger. I don't even think it's I think if I think the way that I like to build this next mana base when I played this was the 12 fetch lands. Like right now it's awful. But like th this setup here is, is not good. I can't really defend this. But I'm a big fan of the well they hit a tireless striker. We're gonna get brown so bad here. They have a casting wolf run too, so they can just like I mean, if they get greedy if they get greedy greedy here, we can kill them, but 
Yeah. All right, we're going to just pass and watch our lose here. 600 games to get five packs. Yeah, I didn't even check that out, Tannen. I heard everybody talking about it. Well, Tom McGoyf is great, Teddy. <clears throat> like, the fact that... The fact that you can just, like, <coughs> play, you can draw, like, three Tarmogoyfs and just have them all be good is so nice. When you draw three Gurmag Anglers, it kind of feels bad. We're going to lose. So bad. We drew four stubs. First one was good. First one was very good. All right. So let's get that trophy. And this disdainful stroke. <coughs> Cards I am not super interested in. So on the play, I can have a little less removal in my deck. So I think I'm going to cut two fatal pushes. Because it's only like really good against Arbor Elf. But I'll probably actually keep one fatal push in and then cut another faithless looting. Space looting gets worse after you sideboard. We could keep brutality, but brutality is just gonna hit like lightning bolt. Dude, you wanna know whose dog is cute? Huey Jensen's. I've been seeing that thing all over Twitter. Huey just showing off that beautiful Lyra. Yeah, this is what we're gonna do. Dude, dogs are just net. Positive life EV. This is so awkward because we're going to have to bolt ourselves to play a shadow one too, but. And then, like, we just play in the Blood Moon. And we can't, like, not play in the Blood Moon. Like, we've got to go get Watery Grave here. No, we can't even. Jesus. We can't get Watery Grave because then Tarmogoyf's not a good draw. If we get Overgrown Tomb, we have more out, but we lose. On all our counter spells, unless we hit another land. <clears throat> I should have thought about this more. We could just not play our Death Shadow on two. Gives me what I want. <clears throat> Lyra Pawbringer, that's so funny. This is this is so annoying. If I do this, 16, I can still bolt myself. So we're just going to hold our fetch land. And we're going to thought seize because we don't have to make this decision yet. All right, we're just going to take the Utopia spell. Take the ramp. And then go off a turn. Then hopefully we can just, like, oh, wow. So now we go bolt this, Inquisition, take... Probably Kitchen Finks. Leave them with the Scavenging Ooze. But we don't even really have to bolt this, right? Like, if we just go... The problem, the problem is if we don't bolt this, the Blood Braid Elf comes down soon, but then the Blood Braid Elf attacks us. Maybe taking the Sprawl was loose. <coughs> I just wanted to buy time, but I didn't think about it too, too hard. I kind of just want to take Finks, bolt this. And I think that's what I'm going to do. Overgrown Tomb. Inquisition them. Oh man, if we leave them with kitchen things though... Like, scavenging use can take us off our delirium plan, but we don't even have delirium. That's another thing I don't like about this deck. We're not pushing the delirium mechanic very hard, I don't think. I think we're just going to take this, bolt this, hopefully they miss, and buys us time to do something. Stable mana base.
Maybe my opponent will just blood moon me and like put me out of my misery. Just I yield. <clears throat> Oh, has a turn two, has a has a kinder Finks. All right, they played their forest traverse. That's so good. <coughs> Dude, sometimes yeah, you just gotta let it rip right into Blood Moon. Just Arbor Elf. Okay, nice. Hopefully, my opponent attacks me. Where are we <laughs> okay, so now we can go double death shadow. We go to five. Block block here. My opponent plays a storm breath dragon, we still kill them. Gas. So that assuredly makes this super lethal next turn. And then like this is kind of how this deck works. Like it, it just kind of like doesn't operate sometimes, is clunky as all hell, and then all of a sudden you're just like 16 power. Block, block. We died to, we died to lightning bolt there. And then I'm fairly certain with a fetch land, we, well, this is just, God, are you going to bolt me? Please don't bolt me. Please don't bolt me. God damn it. All right, let's get the three, two. Let's get the 3 2. I appreciate everybody for hanging out tonight. We got about 40 people in here. You all are great. Hope you're having a good time. This is going to be my last league of the night. I'm a little tired. I might build another version of this deck here for a couple seconds after this, but this is going to be my last match of the league. Because I'm a tad tired. Oh, Tannen. How graceful. All right, we're going to be able to play, yes. All right, I mean, we probably just go Thought Seize. Now, this Polluted Delta doesn't get Stomping Ground. Because I would like to be able to go Thought Seize, Stomping Ground, Swamp Stomping Ground, play the Time of Life game. But it doesn't appear we can do that. Now, I can't imagine a deck... We're going to keep this, but I can't imagine a deck where we don't want to play Tarmogoyf on two. So, I think we're going to go get Overgrown Tomb. No, that was loose, because like, what am I going to do? If I draw a Fetch Land... Yeah, that was loose. I should have just given myself another turn to make that determination. But now I have an option to play Death Shadow. Oh, nice. All right, let's get this amulet out of here. Remember when I said that I wanted a removal spell? So I thought hand's not very good. This is a good mana base. Okay. I still think that I'm just going to play this Tarn Life. I don't really want to... I want to, like, get something on the board... My opponent does get to make another land drop, but I think just like just half assing my turn isn't that great when I can just attack. And if they want to like, you know, do some shenanigans. So they have Grove in their hand. They have Grove, Gruel Turf. Oh, they just have Grove. Okay. So now they play it, give me a life. Okay. So their hand's explosive, Summoner's Pact. That's not bad. So let's just take this explosives and attack. 
How many land drops can my opponent make? If whoa, whoa, hang on. They go Vesuva Gruel Turf. It comes into play tap though, so it doesn't do anything. So I guess we just take this engineered explosives. And then bolt one of these. They draw an untapped land though. They just go like untapped land, but it comes into play tap, so it doesn't generate mana. Yeah, so we're just, wait, am I am I stupid? This is three, comes into play tap, copies this. Yeah, so we just take the explosives and we beat. We get like we have to keep a threat in play. And we're gonna attack, we're going to use this fatal push before damage because we want to pump our Tarma Wave two points. <clears throat> the thing that will, sometimes they just like, like what this, this deck does is like, it is very rope, like, you get a lot more free wins, I, I think. I think like when your deck just comes, when you just go like discard spell, discard spell, then you just go Tarma Wife Traverse Death Shadow, then it's just like, wow. So that's what they drew. They drew Gemstone Mine. We on this plan now? All right. We're going to do this now. So that if we hit a uh, Primeval Titan, well, they can't cast that, can they? <coughs> we have to stop here and there, upkeep in response before we. Because if they can go. No, they still can't do it. Because even if. Yeah, they can't, they can't play Titan next turn. Unless I'm crazy. But I am going to. Okay. <clears throat> Unless I'm nuts. They go like Vesuvia. But it comes to play tap. So if they copy something and then bounce it, it doesn't matter. This deck's evolving. Like, this deck's becoming better, which is cool. It's, like, changed to become more explosive. It's much like the older version of... Um, it's not much like the older version of the deck, but it's moving closer towards the older version of the deck where it's just ends games much quicker. Hopefully we get something to do. Unfortunately, that <clears throat> drafting Dom, I've used a historic deck for my turn. Open the Lyra, nice. Dude, a steam vents would be sweet right now. So let's get the easy part out of the way. So our opponent's going to be able to tighten us next turn by just making a natural land. So, and then the problem is we don't want them to be able to pack us again. Pack for something. What is this lightning bolt gonna do for me? Like, why shouldn't I just get a blue land? I guess the lightning bolt means I can bolt myself down the road in order to like swing over the top of this primeval titan, maybe. I don't know. We're in a we're in a tough spot here. Opponent elected to keep life for us. They have to block. Hang on, one second. Turn off all of yield. Yield until next turn. So they get Radiant Fountain, Colony Garden. Well, that's a kick in the shorts. Because I can go like bolt this, attack with both. They eat Tarmogoyf. Block here. Bolt this. Block, block. They still have like. 
enough blockers. I could just bolt myself and pray to hit a Battle Rage. Which kind of sounds like my best plan. Because like if this Primeval Titan attacks, it's going to kill. It's not, it might not exactly kill us, but it's going to set up to kill us. And my opponent can just Summoner's Pact for another Titan. YOLO. And we're dead. You have to bolt your own face. Yeah, we got there. Hopefully they do something harebrained here where they attempt to live through Battle Rage. Which it appears they are going to. Which is gives us a chance. So we're going to go... Okay. Push here. I could like just let this trade, but the Death Shadow is at least bigger than the next Tarm than the next uh, Primeval Titan. <laughs> There's only one. You mean, <laughs> like how it combos with Faithless Looting? I actually think that you could build this Jun style deck with Last Hopes. With two Last Hopes in the main deck instead of Liliana's. Because Last Hope at least lets you, like, recur Street Wraiths to pump damage. Our opponent has yet to make a land drop. Our opponent's also like missed giving us a couple points of life, I think. Squire Shadow Ranger, Colony Garden. Look at all those blockers. Just look at them. I don't really see how I don't die here. I guess I just attack with my Death Shadow. And then kind of pray. Paperweight and modern changed my mind. Okay. Yo, I could play this Liliana to get rid of a plant, which I might do. I don't know if that's true, Teddy. All right. Edict target plant. Yes. Get out of my face, plant. Wow, they kept the plant. My opponent can't even miss their pack trigger. I wonder if my opponent kept the plant just to like. They're probably just sitting on an engineer explosives. <laughs> Buying four bales right now. Oh, I saw that. That was on camera, wasn't it, Tannen? But Joku Bog. No. Where's this going? <clears throat> it's going at me. I'm not blocking. Everything is, is pretty cheap at the moment. It's not as cheap as it was like three days ago. That bounces this land. I'm learning how to play Amulet. It's like a cool, like, 
Amulet's a deck that when I look at Amulet, I wonder like why not Ironworks? We're just going at me. You don't want to attack my Liliana? All right, sure. We got a one. <laughs> we have to hit Battle Rage, and like this doesn't quite do it. Can we live? If I go like ditch this, ditch this, block here, block here, they got double strike. Oh, we're dead. Scoop it up. Okay. I hate spirits. I struggle so much to play that deck. But I think I think it's obviously a good deck. I just I just like can't wrap my head around it. Okay, so we don't want this. We want this. Want this. Probably want some number of these, but it's all about what cards we want to take out. I think we can safely lead off by sending this lady to the bench. Um, I'm going to cut a little bit of removal on the play. I'm going to cut the Faithless Lootings because our deck's becoming more focused. I like shaving on a Traverse against a deck that can, like, Bajoku bog you quite a bit. Um, we don't have any more three drops in the deck, so I'm going to cut a land... I'm going to bring these in. Fulminator Mage just seems kind of slow. Could bring these in because if we take the card to Primeval Titan, it's pretty solid. I'm going to cut one push. This is what we're going to do here. To be fair, Trommy's hard out of decks, but I like making absurd amount of decisions for no reason. <laughs> yeah. Dude, just play Ironworks. You make an absurd amount of decisions playing that deck. And it's it's like much easier to play than it used to be. Like the whole facade that like Ironworks is super difficult has is now that it has Psy is kind of like not a true that true anymore. Ship this. Heater. Absolute heater. Not really. All right, we'll keep this. Wow. Ask me what it's like. Why don't you? Let's check out our top card here. Stomp the ground. We don't need that. I'm going to go get Watery Grave because we have a lot of counter spells in our deck after sideboard. I'm going to blast a bounce land. Double amulet. I could take an amulet, trophy an amulet. That seems kind of mopey. I kind of just want to take this Azusa. Is that like loose? Like my opponent's hand doesn't do anything. It's like very close to doing something, but we might be able to just race them. If they make worse one land drop a turn, I think we're okay here. I'm just gonna take this Azusa. And we're just gonna like put our head down and kill our opponent. Cause I really don't want to spend my second turn amulet or trophying an amulet, which means that also ramps them to the Azusa. Yeah, we're just taking the Azusa, and we're going to let them do their thing. Oh, I saw that one. Oh, man, we could have taken it in Surgical. Sun Home Amulet, you got it. Okay. Let's get Blood Crypt. Oh, no, we're not going to play that one. I don't think it's possible. Psy is blue. Psy is a blue card. Let me know when blue trial is good. Why don't you go back to like 2014? 
And that might still be a stretch. Yeah, dude. Okay, make a million mana. Oh, God. Let's draw another one. Summer's pack. Oh, turn off all yields. Shoot. Nice. God, imagine if I go to just being able to surgical that. So what is my opponent's hand? What is it here? We they put they play gruel turf. Was this trigger still in the stack? Yeah. So they haven't put anything in their hands. So they have Cavern of Souls, one other card. They just have the Titan. God, we just got ravaged. <clears throat> Now, if we did it like not F6, we would have surgical this Azusa and been like in the game. But now we're just dead. I yield. I yield. All right. Let's go back to this deck here. Chit chat about this for a hot second and then not play it again. So, I just don't know. I don't know what this version of the deck is doing that you can't get from the Grixis deck or like a streamlined a streamlined like Jun version. You know, like I don't think we want all of these. I don't think I want these. Like if I was gonna play this deck, I would do like Let me just make like uh, like let me just say like the main deck the, the main deck that I'm interested in playing if I was gonna play this deck again, which is like a a big if after this league. Let's go search this up here. I want these. We get the pushes. I want. I think you want these in the main deck because I actually think these are pretty reasonable in the format. Like, for a deck like this that can't beat, that needs help, that just can't do anything in a long game. And it just lets you, like, recur street race if you need to and kill some stuff. Especially considering you're only playing six removal spells. And then, like, I don't know. Just, just do something. I don't know. I don't have any idea. There's a lot going on with Tron that's actually that people overreact to. I don't know. I'm not going to spend too much time thinking about this deck.